respond to them as they come. I also want to let you know that we we are recording this webinar and we'll be sharing it out. I believe the the webinar from Tuesday is already up on um, the Gilead Compass website. Um, and then we will also upload this one as well, because there may be some different questions that come up from this session that didn't come up in the last session. So thank you and welcome to um, the second Faith Coordinating Center grantee webinar. Is The content is the same in both webinars, but just want to thank you uh, for your interest in participating and, and applying for this funding opportunity. We have several different funding opportunities available, and so I'm excited to share those with you. And um, I will also just kind of give you an, a, a background on the Faith Coordinating Center because it's a brand new center. So the um, Faith Coordinating Center is housed within the Wake Forest School of Divinity. It is um, a newly funded um, entity that is funded by Gilead Sciences to support the um, endeavors of integrating faith and health into this um, effort to end the epidemic around HIV. And so the principal investigator who couldn't make it today um, is Dr. Shonda Jones. She is a, um, a, vi a she is a, a, a senior associate dean, excuse me, I was trying to read multiple things at once. She's a senior associate dean um, in the School of Divinity at Wake Forest University and assistant teaching professor of intercultural theological education. I am the executive director of the Gilead Compass Faith Coordinating Center and also a research fellow in faith and health in the School of Divinity. And um, so we both bring different backgrounds. She is a um, minister, a reverend by training and, and a theologian, and I am a sociologist. And so I'm coming uh, with a perspective of thinking about how we integrate both this theological perspective um, into uh, thinking about different aspects of healing and, and um, biblical kind of teachings around sexuality and, and, um, and identity and acceptance and love. Uh, pairing that with, uh, you know, real time, concrete <laughs> uh, programming and initiatives that can address the social, the um, inequality in our in our communities um, in, in access to healthcare, access to transportation, access to housing, um, and stigma around uh, around LGBT uh, communities as well as stigma around HIV. So the 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 center has three main focus areas. The first is around storytelling. How do we tell the stories of people living with HIV, people who are affected. Um, this doesn't necessarily, this initiative is not just for people living with HIV, but also people who may be at risk or who have been affected by HIV, um, uh, you know, through their family members and friends and loved ones. And so we're, we're, we're trying to highlight that and uh, through storytelling. So we'll be doing a podcast that um, features um, interviews and conversations with experts um, in various fields. And we'll also be developing a social media communication toolkit so that faith communities can use that, an education toolkit so faith communities can use that with their um, faith communities to help educate people through from a, a faith perspective about HIV AIDS. And we will also be doing a series of trainings. So these trainings are free and open to the public. Um, some of them will be geared specifically toward grantees to um, build their capacity to do the work that they're doing. Um, you, we also acknowledge that grantees will have different levels of experience. And so you all will also be able to learn from each other in these trainings. And so we will have different topics related to um, this, you know, the details about HIV AIDS, the science, as well as the research and the kind of advancements in medication and the epidemiology of it, the statistics of it. But we will also be talking about biblical and spiritual training and how to glean um, 
you know, insights from uh, religious texts to then talk about how you can inter integrate that into sermons and integrate that into health ministries and, and help establish health ministries um, and sustainable programming, how to um, use crowdsourcing, which is something that I have expertise in, and other community engagement strategies to help address the stigma around HIV. And then, uh, um, we also have these funding opportunities, which I, I know all of you all are most interested in hearing about right now. Um, and so we have three kind of focus areas for those um, funding opportunities, capacity building. So we want to fund organizations that are looking to expand their capacity to do this work. Maybe you've already been doing some HIV work, but now you want to pair it with a faith-based organization, or maybe you are a public health uh, organization or you have a more of a public health focus, but you want to, um, you know, pair with a faith-based organization, or maybe you're a faith-based organization that wants to do the, the pair with the public health, or maybe you're a faith-based organization that already does this work and wants to expand it and wants to, you know, uh, ex uh, increase your reach. Um, maybe you're in one state and you want to expand to multiple states, or maybe you want to, um, work more with HBCUs, where, whereas you've worked with other um, university campuses before that. So, you know, we're looking for that capacity building kind of focus. Um, if you have, you know, we're also prioritizing organizations that have a strategy or have a plan for communication and educational programming around addressing stigma around HIV, but also things like trauma-informed care um, and addressing the social determinants of health. And so, what I mean by social determinants of health are those things like access to education, housing, transportation, food insecurity, um, and, and how those things connect to providing safety nets for people living with HIV and then also integrating that within a, a faith focus. So like I mentioned, um, you know, our current team members are uh, Dr. Shonda Jones and Dr. Allison Matthews, myself. And we also have uh, Marcus Holly, who's a new hire. He is the um, program administrator for, for this project. Um, I need to add him to this slide. We are also leveraging partnerships that we have with um, Wake Forest Baptist Health and Faith Health, which is a, a, an organization connected to Wake Forest Baptist Health that um, um, trains and works with faith leaders and uh, community health workers to connect people to care. So we're kind of using insights from that model to also think about how, how we can develop strategic partnerships with our grantees, as well as the network of um, faith-based organizations across the South um, to, to kind of strengthen those relationships and strengthen the connection between faith and health. And Atrium Health is the newly merged um, entity that Wake Forest Baptist Health is merging with. And so now it's been able to expand that scope from Virginia all the way down to Georgia. So the first um, opportunity that I wanna talk about is um, not tied to funding, but it's a, an executive level um, cohort based training program for uh, called Learning It Together. Uh, the short, the short uh, acronym is LIT. <laughs> um, so the, this executive level um, program, it, we would meet on a quarterly basis to really think about, okay, among these um, leaders who have already been doing this work, how can we, um, you know, strengthen those networks, strengthen the community networks and enhance collaborations across the organizations that you lead, as well as how do we expand your capacity capacity and build your knowledge to be able to um, integrate this work around faith and health. So if you are a grantee and you want to also participate in this kind of um, in intensive, comprehensive training for executive level people, you are open to do that as well, but you're not required to have a grant to be able to participate in this program. So we are opening that up for um, people to apply and the application deadline is April 15th. Um, we're just looking for a personal statement and a resume for that. Um, so the, the first level of funding that we have um, is called the Congregational Partnership. And so that is $15,000. Uh, we, we do encourage, uh, this is for faith, 
faith-based organization. So we do encourage you to um, create proposals that actually meet that $15,000 level. Uh, we, you know, we're not really looking for smaller amounts than that. So if you could figure out a way to, I'm sure it's not hard for you to think about how you spend $15,000, but, um, you know, so think about pre preparing a proposal that really showcases how you're going to use this money in a way to develop and es establish or expand initiatives and programs or even conducting maybe your own individual research within your faith-based organization um, that promote that positive faith and health outcomes, especially around HIV. So we're trying to keep this broad because we know that you all have a lot of creativity in these areas and we want to um, you know, have a general focus, but also create room for you to propose things that you think are relevant for your community and for your context. Um, but the idea is for, it, for, for this funding to help increase the capacity for faith communities to address social determinants of health. And so we're also adding in a, a $10,000 worth of consulting services. So I think um, in your proposal, it would be helpful if you could think about what type of consulting you may need. Maybe you need um, accounting support on thinking about how to, you know, um, accounting and finance support or grant writing support to think about how you can um, qualify or get prepared for um, you know, uh, larger grants. Or maybe you need communication support and thinking about how you can develop a social media strategy and community engagement strategy for your, um, for your project that you've proposed. And so we will be able to provide those consulting services for you um, and we, uh, specific to your, to your needs. And so we, we encourage you to inc include that in the application. Um, and we're also with this focus on the congregational partnership, trying to focus on this participating in a national um, communi campaign, communications campaign that we will be leading with the coordinating center to address HIV stigma for faith communities by faith communities. So getting your insight, getting your feedback, as well as your participation in disseminating those communication materials throughout your um, faith communities. The faith action. Um, grant is similar to the Congregational Partnership Grant. Um, the only difference is that it's for nonprofit organizations and nonprofit organizations that are in partnership with faith communities for faith action oriented projects um, centered around faith to help reduce stigma, um, maybe engage in spiritually and integrated trauma informed care and aid in the, in the changing perspe perception of HIV AIDS in the South. Um, you know, and also to increase both the capacity, excuse me, the capacity of the faith community as well as the nonprofit organizations um, capacity to address social determinants of health. So maybe you have a food pantry or you have, um, you know, services for people who are in incarcerated or people who are homeless or, um, and, and you want to integrate some educational programming or mental health support or trauma-informed trauma care, that, um, that can also you know, address this kind of stigma around HIV and, and or mitigate it by you know, getting them connected into resources, right? So those are the kinds of things that we're looking for. Um, so the transformative grant is a collaborative grant between the coordinating centers that are funded by Gilead. So um, the transformative, I mean, the, the other coordinating centers are include um, uh, University of Houston and Southern AIDS Coalition. So University of Houston focuses on mental health and trauma-informed care. Um, and then Southern AIDS Coalition focuses on stigma around HIV in general. And then we focus on the faith-based um, connection to HIV stigma um, and, so, and more also the social determinants of health. And so we, um, each one of the centers will have their own transformative grant um, and so if you are interested in the faith-focused transformative grant, you can apply through our center. Um, all of, and, and I'll go into how you can submit your applications in a second, but just wanna give you um, an overview of this. So we are looking for organizations that are larger and who can handle this amount of money um, and who are ready to hit the ground running. Um, 
we're, uh, you know, so we are looking to support the establishment of infrastructures and programs to enhance access to employment, education, transportation, housing. So similar to the other ones, but on a larger scale, financial wellness and healthcare for people at risk for or acquiring, um, for, at risk for acquiring and or living with HIV. Um, so we want to, you know, with all of these grants, but particularly for the Transformer grant, we want to create inclusive faith spaces. Um, these can be virtual or in person. Um, we want to create opportunities for physical, emotional, and financial wellness and educate emerging faith leaders and faith communities. So maybe you work primarily with faith leaders and on, a, on, on multiple faith leaders, multiple faith organizations rather than just one. Um, this, this grant would be a better fit for you. And then we have the capacity building grants. Um, that's a $250,000 level. Um, these are for larger organizations. Maybe um, you're in multiple states um, and you uh, are able to have a larger reach. And you know, so these are capacity building grants that will support the establishment of infrastructures to enhance your communications, um, trauma-informed care, health ministries, and other programs to respond to the HIV crisis in the South. So these, you know, we want you to demonstrate kind of uh, an ability again to be able to handle this amount of money, right? Do you have? We want to. We want you to demonstrate that you have the infrastructure for that, right? Do you have uh, accountants and staff and uh, and a reach that um, and with multiple organizations um, or multiple churches, and and are and and have maybe demonstrated some success? Maybe not. It doesn't necessarily have to be always in HIV, but demonstrate demonstrated success in other ways that can show that you can um, build your capacity to do this work. So, you know, the funding for these, we, these are the, these are our goals for the impact to have faith communities who are trained to address and educate others about HIV stigma, um, using these community engaged and trauma informed approaches. We want to increase the capacity to address social determinants of health, and we want to have a coordinated national com communications campaign. And so that those podcasts that we're developing and the social media content that we're developing and the trainings, we want you all to use those things to dissem disseminate it out, but also um, participate in conversation and communication so that we can build um, materials together on best practices and, and ways to move forward. So we want you to drive the work just as much as we, we drive it. So you can submit the applications to gileadcompass.com. These applications are live and open. Um, you can, and we do su suggest that you kind of um, look through each one of them. There's way more detail in the, um, the, on, the, on the website on the actual specifics of the guidelines for each grant. And, I, and I'm going to go into more specifics in a second. Um, so you can submit your application. It's actually a form that you submit on the gileadcompass.com website um, to submit your, um, your proposal, submit your budget. We have a budget template and all of that um, you know, to make it easy for you. So what makes a strong application? I kind of mentioned some of those things before, but you, we want you to make, make sure that you clearly articulate how your project will address people living with HIV and or who are impacted. Um, Articulate how you will deliver your program. What are the specific strategies? What are the plans? Do you have a timeline? Do you have, um, you know, a, a, do you have personnel? Do you have the partnerships already in place? So we want you to demonstrate those things. Even if, even if you are proposing to develop a partnership with an organization, we want you to have already communicated with them and maybe provide and also provide a letter of support saying that they are open. They are open and willing if, if you were to be funded to um, participate in this project and make it successful. Um, don't worry about your project being too small. Um, we do want to support grassroots efforts um, that can reach into the deep into the heart of the community of need. A lot of times uh, funding opportunities are for these large organizations that are only for large organizations, but we do recognize the power and the potential of smaller entities who are embedded in the community and who have impact and who maybe need $15,000 and that would go a long way. So that's why we created these different levels of funding. 
Um, and we also want to uh, think focus, think focus rather than bid broad, bid big or broad programs or initiatives. So we want you to have, um, you know, be, you know, think about how you can have impact um, and reach deep into the community rather than campaigns that try to reach everyone across the spectrum. Okay, so the details. Um, in order to el be eligible for these um, awards, you have to have a 501c3 status or a fiscal sponsor. So partnering with an organization that does have 501c3 status and you need to um, be providing programming in these 12 deep South states. Now, if your, your organization is based in Indiana or somewhere else, that's okay or DC or wherever, it, that's okay, but you have to demonstrate that you are doing work in these um, D South states, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. Um, individuals are not eligible to, to uh, apply for this grant. Um, so all of the grant opportunities are due May 1st, except for the transformative grant, which is due May 21st. And um, the, we will uh, uh, send out notifications of award by June 1st. So this is a quick turnaround. And with the expectation that you will be ready um, to hit the ground running July 1st. We will, of course, give you some you know, time to get started um, between July and August. But you know, the idea is that we're giving you enough time now so that you can start planning and be ready to start July 1. So the grant cycles for all of the grants except for the transformative grant are July 1st to June 30th. Um, and they must be expended by the end of the funding cycle. So uh, the grants, uh, each one of these grants, you will be required to submit quarterly uh, reports, a mid-year report and a final report. Um, so these reports will kind of demonstrate what impact you've had in the community using the grant funding, what organizations you've partnered with, how many trainings you've attended that are hosted by Faith Coordinating Center or other Gilead Compass Coordinating Centers. Um, you know, how many people are you reaching? Uh, and then we'll also be, um, you know, working with you to, to implement tools that can assess your, your impact um, on addressing stigma. And, um, and you'll be re required to submit a narrative report and a budget report at the end of the grant cycle. So for the transformative grant, um, the application opens April 19th. So this is on a different um, cycle because we're collaborating with the other centers um, and it will be due May 21st. The grant cycle, again, will still be from July first, but it will be a year and a half instead of one year. It's from July until December 31st. Quarterly reports are the same um, with slightly different due dates because the cycle is different. Um, and you cannot, none of the grantees who apply for our funding should are eligible, none of, none of the organizations are eligible for funding from the Faith Coordinating Center if you are already receiving grant funds from any of the other Compass Initiative Coordinating Centers. The idea is that we want to provide opportunity for organizations that have not received funding. Um, if you have received funding in the past from a faith coordinating or from a coordinating center, but you, you're that that grant award is not active, then you are eligible to apply. We just don't want you to have multiple or, um, grants going on at the same time. Okay, faith uh, the capacity building grant. Um, this one, uh, this is the two hundred fifty thousand dollar level grant. We are requesting a letter of intent. Uh, we extended the deadline to allow for people who are attending these webinars to to have an opportunity to apply um, to so the letter of intent is due March 31st which is next week um, 
only organization, so we will have an administrative review of those letters of intent and only organizations who we um, invite to apply and submit a full application will be able to uh, submit a full application. So the invitation should come out um, within a week or so after the deadline of the letter of intent. Um, the deadline for submitting the application is still May 1st. Uh, and I do believe that you should still, um, the letter of intent is also submitted through gileadcompass.com. And so that is open right now and you can look to see what is what needs to be included there. You know, we, again, it's a summary of what you're proposing, um, who your partners are and what kind of evidence you have of showing that you can handle that amount of money um, and what kind of evidence you have of the impact that you've had in your previous work that will then feed into and build upon and expand your capacity to do the work around HIV stigma in faith communities. Okay. So you cannot use um, awards to pay for or offset the cost of any of the following like medications or purchasing of medications. So um, you can't necessarily use it to pay for HIV medication or HIV prevention medication. Um, you cannot pay for direct medical expenses or lab expenses of people in the community. You cannot use this to offset deficits of your organization or buy medical research or clinical trials. There are fun, there's funding, abundant funding for that <laughs> um, that is separate from what we are offering. There are projects that directly we, you cannot um, use the funds to directly influence or advance Gilead's business, including purchasing, utilizing, prescribing, um, formulary position, pricing, reimbursement, referral, recommendation, or payment of products. Um, you cannot pay individual healthcare providers or physical group practices. Um, and this money is not necessarily to just go support an individual salary, but it is, you can support a salary, but it has to be multiple, you know, kind of um, supporting the programmatic efforts. It's not just to go to, toward one individual person. Um, events, you cannot, uh, you can't support events that have already occurred. And also we're not necessarily looking to support a one-off conference, we wanna see multiple kind of forms of programming. Um, and you cannot support government lobbying activities. You can, however, pay for program related costs, staff costs, supplies, technology incentives, and membership fees for required platforms. So like, like software. Um, the documents needed for application are W-9, letters of support from the organizations that you're partnering with, um, or and a letter from your fiscal sponsor if you are, are not a current 501c3. Um, we obviously want you to submit your proposal and um, organizational operating budget. So if you are a church, that would be your church's operating budget. We want, and the reason why we're asking for this is we want to gain, gain a sense of what your ability is to be sustainable beyond the scope of this work uh, beyond the scope of this grant. Like this grant will help kind of catalyze the work, but then we want to see that you have kind of plans for maybe applying for additional funding or can support it in some way through your, through your organization. Um, and then obviously providing how you will, how you plan to spend the, the funding from this uh, grant opportunity and the narrative for that. These are the timeline. Um, we released the announcements on March 15th on Gilead Compass, so all of them are live. The deadlines are due May 1st. Um, we will review them during May and send out award letters in June and receive the funding in July. All right, do we have any questions? Dr. Matthews, it does look like we have one question in the chat. What is the determining factors for those who are considered at risk of inquiring HIV? Can you repeat that question one more time? 
Yes. What is the determining factors for those who are considered at risk of inquiring HIV? Um, so <laughs> that is kind of, okay. So the, the, the people who are most at risk, um, and this is kind of based, this is mostly based on epidemiology and, and research, but we know that men who have sex with men are at high risk. Um, transgender men and women are at high risk. Uh, black women and black men, <laughs> whether the, regardless of your sexuality, are at high risk for acquiring HIV. People who are low income, people who are housing insecure, food insecure, um, people who have limited access to health care. Um, these are the types of people who, uh, people who inject drugs, yes, uh, or who. Um, um, yeah, so these are the types of pe or people who are in relationship with um, people living with HIV, um, people who engage in sex work. So those are the category. Those are the typical people who um, we would consider vulnerable to HIV. Um, however, that does not preclude anyone else from also acquiring HIV. Looks like we have one more question. Um, can more than one grant from the Faith Coordinating Center be applied for and run at the same time during this grant cycle as um, I know that from other coordinating centers that this is not allowed? No, you, you should only apply for one grant at a time. So please select the one that you think is most appropriate for you. And you can also inquire and, and see, you know, if you want to ask more specifics from one of us, um, you know, giving us like some more detail about what you're proposing, and then we can kind of see which one might be a better fit for you. There, there aren't any additional questions in the chat at this time. Well, we certainly appreciate everyone for joining today. Um, if you have additional questions, you can contact our program administrator, uh, Marcus Holly. So Marcus is putting his contact information in the chat. It's compass at wfu.edu. And you can call him 336-758-5058. You can um, submit and we also kind of encourage you to go to gileadcompass.com. Um, to um, look at the application, um, you know, kind of prepare your materials separately and then submit. Um, you have to, it's an online form. So you're just copying and pasting your, your information into that online form. I see there was another question. Yes, there is one more question. Will you only get consulting if you are approved for the grant? Um, we're only providing financial support for consulting if you're approved for the grant, but if you have kind of, you need some general support, we are always open to meeting with people and talking to talking through the talking through things with them and providing advice. Um, and if you're also, you know, if you're funding, if your proposal is not funded, but maybe we think it's maybe a good fit for another funding opportunity that's provided by Gilead, um, we certainly would um, provide that suggestion to you. There are, uh, there are plenty of other funding opportunities. We are not the only one that's offered through Gilead. They have others that are more focused on that healthcare focus. Um, so say you're a uh, healthcare focused organization um, and you really wanna focus on the healthcare costs and offsetting costs for medications and those kinds of, there are funding opportunities through Gilead for those things. We are just not offering them through the Faith Coordinating Center. And if you could just reiterate um, when the recording and the slides will be made available to uh, yes. attendees. Yes, so the recording should be available by tomorrow, I believe. Um, it didn't take us long for it to get it up on the website. Um, and we'll, we'll, we will also upload those slides. And we're also gonna be sending out the recording um, via email because uh, there are some people who registered who were not able to attend. 
Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. We look forward to your applications and feel free to reach out to us if you have additional questions. Have a good day. Thank you.